Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling in Zimbibo. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at what's new in Zim 9.4.0, and that includes an organizer and a panel components, and a variety of updates to the pen and lists as, as we've been going as well. So you can see that all at zimjs.com slash updates.html. And let's go take a look at how we're using these things. So this is GenPen. We've been working on this as an app for a while. One of the updates to a pen is that it no longer, well, we can set it so that it no longer continues on and damps. So that leaves a pen that doesn't trail off. Uh, it could look like this. You see with all these little bits on the end there. Um, and it was forced to look like that as the damping finished. But now you can decide to do it that way or not. Uh, so this is Gen Pen, And on the right hand side, we have a list. So this is a list, the layers list here. And uh, we can drag the list, etc. The organizer is this thing right up here, which says, all right, if I'm going to say draw on this layer and draw another stick going up, now this stick is above that one. Well, the organizer allows me to move it down with this arrow. So now it's at the bottom. Or we could move it to the very top, for instance. And now ID2 is up at the very top of all this. Or move it to the very bottom. And now it's to the bottom. And each time it's making my layers change. Now, hooking up the layers over here, that's another matter. But the organizer is what allows us to add a layer. So it just added an ID layer 11 and move that up and down and delete a layer there. Just deleted the layer, etc. So the organizer, uh, you make it and then you can insert it into a list. So here's some other examples. Uh, this is These are the controls that are being worked out to um, uh, make the pen uh, so we can say how big it is and make a choice here so say five and then the organizer is allowing me to add that to this list Let's choose another number 10 and add it etc now we have a list there and if we want we can delete so I'm selecting five it's hard to tell we're selecting let me add one more and then you can see so there's 15 if I want 15 to move over there it moves over if I want 5 to be deleted I hit the X and it's deleted so this is an organizer on a horizontal list this time uh, here as well we're adding a color okay and now we're adding colors we're using the organizer now this time uh, in this first case the organizer is taking whatever numbers there 20 or we can go 30, 40, etc. Taking whatever numbers there and adding it to the list right away. But in this case, we're hitting the plus sign and the organizer has not yet added anything to the list. So there's a delay and we choose a color and hit OK. And now it gets added to the list. So the organizer can handle that as well. And if I want that orange to be at the beginning of the list, badoop. And if I want, if, if it's a series, it'll do this color, this color, this color, this color in order. So the order actually matters. If it were random, maybe the order doesn't matter as much. And that's a little toggle. It was new in the last dim, I think, a toggle to toggle between those. So neat, huh? Now this thing right here is a panel. So the panel is this outside bit here. And with the panel, we can go to uh, multiple uh, pages, in a sense, inside of the panel. So we're toggling between the color and the blend there. Or in this case, I think we're going height, center, height. Now, which one was it? One? Uh, I thought there was one with three. But anyway, you can set up as many of those as you want, or even random ones to show random cards or something like that. So that is the panel and the organizer. Cool, huh? And here's an organizer down here. What this one does is if I want line to move over there, I press the organizer and move move the line along, or I can delete the line, etc. I can add new things to it as well. So this organizer is operating on the presets. So in other words, we're going to be setting a pen and then adding the pen to the presets uh, and then using the pen on here. And that's that's the idea of GenPen. Uh, it's under construction. As we're building it, we're seeing that the, the tools that we need and you know are using over and over again that organizers in a bunch of different places here, uh, as are the panels. 
and therefore adding those to Zim. So, uh, all right, well, let's dig into uh, some code, perhaps, how about? And here is the code for the organizer, an organizer, as a matter of fact, that's, let me show you where that is. We'll close the pen down. This is this organizer right here, uh, which is doing the color picker in one case. The first one is the basic one, one, two, three, four, five. And if I'm sitting on three and I want a new one, now I've got a new one that comes after. If I delete the new one, the, the new one is deleted, etc. And if I want one to go on the bottom, one goes on the bottom, etc. So that's the organizer there on, uh, well, that is the organizer on a list. Now, uh, what we've done, initially we had it so that the organizer was a separate thing, and you would just position it above the list or beside the list, and you can still do that. And you would tell the organizer, here's the list I want you to organize. And so they could be disassociated in a sense or in, in, in place. Uh, but most of the time we were putting the organizer in at the top of the list, even on this one where we've got the horizontal list, it turns out that that's a fairly nice tight little package there. You don't even you maybe don't need the title bar on it, but even running an organizer along a horizontal list like this, uh, wow, that's it's really handy. Uh, if it's a really long horizontal list, then maybe it'll look a bit awkward, but you could leave it up there like tabs on it. Uh, and, and then, of course, for a vertical list, it, it looks pretty good right on the top of the vertical list there. So since we were positioning it in that manner most of the time, we swapped her up and said, all right, well, how about we can do it the other way? We make an organizer, and when we make the list, we can tell the list which organizer to use and pass that in as a parameter, and it will automatically insert the organizer in between here is the title bar and the rest of the list. Uh, if you don't have a title bar, that looks fine too. Let's go into the code and get rid of the... Sorry, <laughs> nothing showing up down there at the bottom. Oh, for Pete's sake. There it is. Um, there's my taskbar. Woohoo, taskbar. Uh, all right, so here's the code on the simple example. Let's see what that looks like without the title bar. Come back here and refresh. Oh, this is the this is the live or the live version. We'll just look at a local version. Open a browser and get rid of the live version. So there it is. I can no longer pick that up and drag it. That is the organizer with the list underneath, which looks cool too. So you can insert that and just put some sort of name somewhere else on it. You don't have to have the name on a bar like so. Okay, so let's see how we did it. Here's the organizer. It's a new organizer. Well, first, we'll show that we're up in Zim 9.4.0. We're making an organizer. In this case, the list is a custom size. So if you add the organizer to the list, I think it actually picks up on the size of the list, actually. Unless, is it me? I can't remember. One of these ways, it knows the size of the list. Oh, no. This, Yeah, it doesn't know the size. So let's save that. I think this messes up. So refresh here. Yeah. So the organizer is made with a default 300, because 300 is actually how wide a default list is. So they're both default 300. But if you build the organizer first, it has no idea how big a list is, so it just does the default. Suppose we could make it so that it automatically changes a size. No, we can't. We, we thought of that. If we automatically change the size of the organizer, then it prevents us from doing something like making the organizer a 100 on a 200 list or something like that, where we might want a small organizer here on a big list. Obviously, not that small. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I mean? So we can't automatically resize your organizer for you. Uh, anyway, it's no big deal. We've decided to make our organizer 200, and our list matches that. If you do it the other way around, because you can, you can take your organizer and move it down here. <sighs> I wish I didn't do that. You can take your organizer and move it down here like that, and then say to the organizer what the list is, uh, null in terms of the size, and the list will be whatever this list is right here, which is list. Now what we're doing is creating the organizer after the list. Therefore, 
we can't pass the organizer in. I didn't even get to show you that yet. We can't pass the organizer in. However, oh, and we haven't positioned the organizer. So now it's not positioned anywhere. Dot pose. There, there it will be at zero, zero on stage, which will look pretty crummy because it'll be right here. So here's our organizer for this list. So this list doesn't appear to have the organizer on it, but look, I can sit on one and, and move it down. So you can have a remote organizer if you want, but what we usually end up doing is putting this on the top of the list and then moving it up a bit, and that got to be just a bit of a pain and realized, well, it would be nice if we could hook those up. So we uh, sort of backed up, and we'll back up as well. So now we've got the organizer first, and we pass it in as a parameter. Here's the list. Here's the list with the title bar. At the width, the height, how many we want to view, and our list of things. Uh, scroll bar active, false, right because by default the scroll bar will be true on the list, and then passing in the organizer to the list. Now we don't have to worry about positioning or even adding the organizer. It will handle that for us. No positioning and in, in adding necessary. And dum, 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 the organizer is back on the list. Cool. Whoop. For uh, the colors, let's see down here, here's the color example. We did it the same way where we made the organizer first. We said auto add false. So you can choose whether or not this is going to auto add, you can choose whether it's going to auto remove, and you can choose whether it's going to auto position. That uh, those choices relate to your arrows, your various arrows. It may be that when I go to delete something, I want to check on something first. I have to do something beforehand. As a matter of fact, in the uh, gen pen, I don't let you do more than less than 10 layers. So you can do more than 10 layers, but you cannot delete more than 10 layers because uh, we just want those layers to be there. So um, I can't delete right away. This, this removes it right away without any checks. So what I do is I set the auto delete to false. And then I capture the, the request for a delete, much like in this color when we capture the request for an add and we do something. So let's see how that's done. We first of all say auto add false, and that means it won't automatically add. Then in the change event on the organizer, so we're dot changing uh, that, a change was added not too many zims ago. Not too many zims ago. Uh, probably three or four zims ago, a chainable change method along with a chainable tap method. So you you could use an on method, but it's not chainable. So you could say on chain, quote change, do this function, or on quote click, do this function, but that's not chainable. So we, uh, we added a cha chainable change and we added a chainable uh, tap. Tap is a little bit different than a click where you have to mouse down and mouse up in the same rough place, like within a couple pixels from where you've moused down. Okay, so, uh, and that's actually handy on the list. It's very important on the list, as a matter of fact. That's why when we have our list here, we tap. We use tap on colors. Uh, why do we do this? Colors.tap. Oh, oh, no, I don't think so. I think we could just do that. Pose.tap. I do believe is fine. And that's nice. Chainable. We tap on the list because as you're dragging the list, if you used a click, when you finish dragging the list, that click would be on the list and it would activate whatever your mouse is on. So that, that's pretty annoying. Can you imagine that? So as I drag my list, say I'm dragging my list, that's a click. Let's add one more to that thing. I'm dragging my list, that would be a click, uh, and yet I'm not intending to do it where this is a click. Uh, you can't tell what that click is. Now let's bring up a color. How about blue? Okay. Ready? Click. So a click is in the same place, but a drag and it, uh, would, would normally be a mouse up. If I were dragging that, 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 would have been, that would have activated it if I used a click. But we have to use a tap. Oh, gosh. Let's add another color in there quickly. All right, 
Um, oh, that's another thing too. These things that we're adding are active to, in the list to be able to set the background. So let's see how we do that. A note as well on that list is uh, by default, the <laughs> it's sort of like a, ooh, is that a cool little title bar top? Um, the title bars are by default background transparent like that, which take on whatever background is. Uh, but you can set the background color as a parameter or a property. Okay, so uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, here we are in the colors. We talked about the fact that when it changes, right, we are capturing the event right here. Here's the change event. If color org, which is our organizer, org type. So it has a few properties. Org type is uh, the uh, type of button that was pressed. So that's either going to be add, remove, write, uh, left, no, for, forward, no, previous, I can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember, I have to check the docs on that, up and down, um, up and down maybe, uh, yeah, in your list, I can't remember, anyway, you've got those different settings uh, relating to the buttons, by the way, if you do put an organizer on a horizontal list, did you notice that those buttons uh, change direction, so those arrows are pointing left and right, and these ones are doing up and down, um, uh, yeah, I wonder what I did. Let's go to the Zim site and check the docs on that for org. Here it is. Let's see what uh, properties or what values we did. Up, down, top, bottom. So it's up, down. Er, maybe could have been something better. That's like good for a vertical. Up, down, top, bottom. That's good for a vertical. But you've got top and bottom. Think of it as a list. Think, you know, you've got a list on a piece of paper. Uh, so you move up in the list, move down in the list. It's very traditional that you think of it uh, sort of vertically stacked. Although we would have to use those uh, those as well if we want horizontal. Hmm. <laughs> Usually we're pretty careful about that. I hope we're careful enough. Um, anyway, semantics, huh? Semantics. So oh, we're checking to see if we're adding, and if we are adding, then we show the color picker. So we haven't added, but the add button was pressed. Now when we've got a color picker down here, so there's the color picker is a new color picker. When we change the new color picker, yeah, so here's the change event on the new color picker and the color color org dot add. So the color org is our organizer. If we use add, remove, uh, next, previous, are they next previous? Or are they up, up down? <laughs> Probably up down methods. Uh, yeah, up down methods. Then you can use those little methods to move around in the list. Or if you wanted to, you could probably use the list name dot um, add to. So it would be the list name, which is colors. So colors dot add to, and you could add that way as well. And what we're doing is at whatever index we're at, we are adding a new button. A slight change in the way that you probably won't have noticed, but we swap that a little bit. When you add something to a list now, it puts it after the thing that you're on. So after what you're currently on. In the previous 9.3, it was uh, adding it before the index that you were on. It was like inserting it before, but I think it works more naturally adding it after. I do believe, yeah, you can change that because sometimes the lists are reversed. And, and that's the thing. We, we actually built that, that system when we were doing the panels in GenPen. And GenPen had these vertical panels up the side that started at the bottom. Most lists start at the top, but GenPen started at the bottom because they're layers, low layers. So uh, we were sort of biased in that regard. And then when we went to make other lists, we realized that, oh, wait a minute, you know, most people would add something after the list rather than before. So we swapped the, the default on that, but did provide a parameter that you can change, change which side it will add to. Okay. I don't know if you got that. Um, but hopefully... <laughs> Uh, if you didn't repeat the uh, video, yeah, it's on video. You can repeat it in slow motion. Robin de Boba. There, did you get that one? Robin de Boba. 
I think that's how Jabba the Hutt probably talked. Huh? He's probably just some programmer, some really, you know, <laughs> some really excellent programmer. And uh, people keep saying, please go, go slower. Uh, <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> I don't know if you got that. Anyway, that would have been called a digression. Why don't we leave that for later? Although I have been feeling I've, I've been getting pretty serious with these things, huh? You know, what do you think? Pretty serious in the bubbling videos of late? Less joking around, less goofing around. Anyway, there's a little bit of goof around for you. Okay, so color uh, org.add, and we're adding a new button. And what about that button? It's just a button that's, that's holding a new circle icon that has the color picker selected color sort of thing. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you can make use of an item width, so item width and item height is being used there. Colors, the list comes with an item width and an item height. Uh, you run into problems if you are adding custom uh, items to a list, then you might run into problems. Oh, that was a neat thing. Yeah, this list was made, I don't know, check this out. This list was made empty, and so we had to adjust the list to allow an empty list to be made. And when it is made empty, the way we handle that is we secretly add a tab of just, you know, whatever, and therefore it makes one thing in the list, and it will use default sizes for all of that. And then in the tabs, we said, oh, if this was a secret thing that we're making, remove that, because otherwise the tabs couldn't be made with an empty list. So uh, we uh, handled that then, and with that, you are given how big, and that is item width and item height, this is of the list, how big that that uh, tab was size was, and mind you, then it was deleted. So now we can add a bunch of circ uh, a bunch of buttons here. We're adding a bunch of buttons that make use of that size. That gives us the size. Do you remember where we are in this? Let's refresh here. We're here in the organizer, so I, I select something. We've just made that button, and that button happens to be item width, item height, that came from the fact that we really already, <laughs> even though that looks empty, we already added a button in there, found out the size, recorded it, and then removed the button. And that was our way of handling an empty list, uh, which kind of makes sense, I suppose. Now we can add a bunch of those things in there. That's nice. Okay, so that's what that one's doing. And then on the list itself, which is called color, no, that's the color picker, on the list itself, which is called colors, we have a tap on that, which is saying set the framed color to whatever color is selected. Selected is the thing that's selected in the list. Its icon is its icon, and the icon color is what was holding the color from the color picker. Yeah, <laughs> we updated the stage. Woot, woot. Isn't that nice? All right, let's go quickly and look over at the panel and see what that was like. Oh, I have a panel example too. So once again, we're in, oh, no longer need to pizzazz. Isn't that nice? So when this was originally created, the, to get those, oh, to get the arrows, I surely put the arrow in the past, pizzazz. To get the arrow initially in the panel, it came from pizzazz and same with all those, uh, the previous next buttons, etc. They came from Pizzazz 2, the icon set that you can grab, but we no longer need that. And uh, let's view this one. Open in browser. There she be. This is a panel. We thought initially we wouldn't let it be dragged. You know, it's sort of like, hey, there's a permanent panel. If you want to drag something, put it in a pane or whatever. It is similar to a pane, but there are some differences. It doesn't automatically close. It doesn't have a backdrop color. Uh, it doesn't open right in the middle. It doesn't, it doesn't run on a show and a hide sort of system, uh, which is a little bit easier, I think, and handles everything all at once. Um, the, the, pa the panel is supposed to kind of stay there. It's a panel. Initially, we didn't even have a drop shadow for it. It was like, oh, no, this is staying there. No drag, no drop shadow. It's just like you put a panel in and, hey, it's supposed to stay there. Then we realized that's kind of silly. It, it only took five, ten minutes to add a, a drop shadow if we want it and a drag if we want it. So there it is. It's a panel. And it probably was going to come with this bar. Otherwise, you may as well just make a rectangle because that's pretty well all it is is a rectangle with a title bar on it. And a neat thing about it is a bit of an organizational system where if you pass in a list, and we'll show you how to do that, you can uh, go between a bunch of different panels. So in this case, sunny today, 
and it's minus 30 tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it is. So uh, let's look into the code here. Var panel equals a new panel. We've set this one to draggable. By default, that's not draggable. And there's a title bar, and we're using a series. So if we want one more thing in the series, comma, mm, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, I suppose that would do. We refresh here, and now we've got today, tomorrow, and yesterday. Now, why did it put, there's 30. I'm not sure why it kept the 30 in. Oh, it's now mixed up, it looks like, or something, but hey, that's fine. Oh, no, it's not mixed up. It, it keeps on toggling those two, uh, just because of the way we handled the event. Um, let's show you. But anyway, that's one way. Now, just beware, there's another way of, of doing this, and that is putting in a list. But if you put in a list, there's my darn cat behind me. Can you hear it? How many times does that happen, I tell you? I've been doing these recording. That just goes to show. This cat goes in and out 10 times a day, maybe more, 20 times a day. You're probably sitting at home going, 10 times a day? You're lucky. <laughs> my cat is like 50 times a day. Anyway, uh, refresh here. I'll have to cut this one short pretty soon. So now what happens is as I move, it is randomly picking a pane. Now that's kind of neat. It can be neat. You can random, like have a bunch of random cards or something like this and just cycle through them. And it's quite easy to do. But this is ZimV. So ZimV is the, uh, uses Zik. It's a way to randomly pick. So this is one way to do ZimV as an array. Uh, if you just put in one word, then you're, that's another way to do ZimV, I suppose. It will randomly pick from that one word and just pick that word. So that's it. You don't, you don't, get, a, you don't get a triangle. If you want a triangle there, you would have to do um, a series or an array of the same word, I suppose. But a series is another thing that you can pass into ZimV, along with a configuration object that has, oh, oh sorry, not a configuration, a rand, a rand object that has a min and a max. But anyway, we're not using the rand object with a min and a max. There's no min and max involved here. But there is a series or any other function. So you can pass in a function that returns a value as a ZimV. Series happens to be a function that returns a value in order. So it'll do today first, tomorrow next, yesterday next, then it will cycle back to today, etc. Okay, so if you want multiple panels, just pass in a series of text and, and you'll get them. And what we've done is we built those uh, built stuff to go on them. And this one we made a container. It's probably handy because you're going to want to remove and add things to the panel. Uh, most likely you'll put everything you want to put in the panel on a, in a container and add it. And then anything you want on the second page of the panel or, wh or whatever you want to call that, then uh, you put that in a different container. So here's tomorrow. It's in a new container. It's got a label in the tomorrow container. Uh, there's a sunny circle in the today container. So two, two bits of content. And then when the panel changes, what we've said is if today has a parent, so if today's in there, remove today and add tomorrow. That's why this doesn't work with three things at the moment, but we could make it work with three things quite easily. Another thing you could do is you could say if panel dot text is double equal to today, or is it capital today, so the panel has a text property that will tell you the text at the top of the current panel. So this should work in the same way. Have I removed the third one? Uh, you know, else if, well, okay, let's put it in. Else if panel dot text is equal to tomorrow, do that. And then else, it, it's the next day we would, uh, I suppose we would, what's what's there? If it goes to tomorrow, we've added to today. Let's see, it's going to go today. And then if the panel is tomorrow, tomorrow's will be there. Else, uh, I think it would be tomorrow dot remove from. But what do we remove from if it's tomorrow? Oh, I think I got this mixed up. Tomorrow, today is just confusing me, <laughs> which is sort of why I went the other route in the first place, uh, because 
sometimes a little confusing working this stuff out. All right, what do we have now? We refresh and we have today. Oops, tomorrow's got the same stuff. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Is it? Let, let's check that. Uh, oh, they're all uppercase. Oopsie daisy. Okay. So, uh, tomorrow. Today. Let's see if I did that right now. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, a little bit wrong. Tomorrow's sunny. Yesterday was minus the 30. And today is nothing that was a stage.update issue okay so hang on stage.update oopsie did we forget to put the stage.update in there up <laughs> can do it date upgate i wonder what an upgate is sounds better than a downgate there we are so that was a stage.update issue tomorrow is minus 30 the next yesterday i don't know what it was yesterday i can't remember <laughs> And today is sunny. This <laughs> is like kind of funny because, of course, you can't predict for sure what's day, what's happening tomorrow. I should have known what happened yesterday. It's like a reverse weird weather. I don't know what the weather was like yesterday, but I know what it's like tomorrow. All uh, right. Anyway, why don't we stick that stage dot update? Well, I can undo all that stuff. Don't you like the undo's best? I think that's uh, the most fun part. Look at how fast I can type this stuff. Oh. This is what I'm going into yesterday. Rip, 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 rip. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. Good. Maybe I'll put that stage dot update in there. I'm not sure why this one worked with stage dot update and the other one ran into problems. And we'll upload that. Okay. Did it upload? These days my upload's been suspicious. Upload. Ah, see, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my upload stopped, which means you guys will see a broken thing until I go mm, connect and re-upload that. There we go. Okay. Yeah, still don't have that fixed. But one nice thing is uh, whoever supplied that plug-in for Adam, um, there are now more people on that site saying, "Hey, my updates keep freezing on me." <laughs> so it's not just me. I started it. Woo <laughs> All right, so uh, anyway, hopefully that will all be worked out. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that will be it for the bubblings. We we did two in one. You should go check check out those updates. Uh, oh, that's you know something I usually do show you is the updates. Well, why don't we just look at that? And go to a website and see where those updates are. So on the Zim site, you can go to the docs, and then on the docs page, there's updates. Or you can go directly to updates.html. And here are, uh, or is, a look at the updates, 9.4.0. The organizer, there's the link to the page we were looking through, the panel. There's the link to the page on the panel. We've made uh, changes to the pen and motion controllers to kind of handle that all better. Fixed a few glitches here and there. Same with lists and tabs. We have added a few different parameters and fixed up a bunch of stuff in there so that they all work together more nicely. More nicely. Tile, we've added Zim V support to V align and align. That is really cool. What that allows you to do is run a series so that you can align something on the left then align it on the right in the next one, and then align it on the left and align it on the right, or whatever series of things you want. You have two on the right, two on the left, two on the right, or, or two on the right, one on the left, two on the right, three on the left, etc. So any of those things now can uh, be done in terms of alignment. That was already there for the column sizes, so you can set different column sizes to anything you want. And same with uh, vertical alignments and stuff. We, on the tag in the text area, added drag and gesture support. So thanks, KV, for that. And we added a little V, a V method, or not a method, um, uh, uh, function in the code module of, of Zim to test to see if something is a Zim V value, if you want. We needed to do that at some point, and a little bit more information on that Zim V stuff. And then a variety of uh, general updates and fixes to two things. All this stuff is done, the CDN, the code page, the templates, the distill, the TypeScript, the GitHub, and the docs are all update. Oh, <laughs> I just forgot. Well, I still got to do it, I suppose. I couldn't have done it yet. And that is, uh, now that these bubbling videos are here, these bubbling videos need to go into the docs as well so that you can uh, have them referenced uh, there. 
as well to find these things in the docs. So we'll post this and do that next. And ladies and gentlemen, that's been what's bubbling at Zim. So a lot of hard work from, from all of us here at Zim. And thank you very much for the community on Slack as well for various suggestions. Although I think some of these are surprises for you, you know, because that, that, that was uh, me working on the on the gen pen that, that brought about these, uh, the organizer. I think you'll find that the organizer is very, very handy and something that not a lot of libraries has. So that's good. Um, if you're wanting to come on in, hang out with us, http colon slash slash, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to start with http colon slash slash, uh, https actually would be better, uh, slash zimjs, dot com slash slack so that's a nice easy way to get into our slack channel it's free and fun come on in join us there uh, and of course hang out at zim zimjs.com thank you and have a great day ciao